Hi everyone, welcome to Fortes and Fide. I wanted to post this quick video. In fact, I had not even planned this video at all. Uh, this just showed up on Instagram. And it was something I was really praying about and thinking about. And one of the promises of Mary when you pray the rosary is that you get signal graces. And one of the things I was asking God was, how can I be, how can I, you know, do your will better? And I was thinking about my past and thinking about all the things I did to neglect my vocation and I wanted to share with you guys just a quick story about that and how this post really affected me especially on today as being the feast of st. Joseph I think this is really powerful advice um, not just in my own life but I think for anybody who reads this quote so before we begin we're gonna begin with a prayer so we're gonna say the Our Father I think I want to make this a habit from now on whenever I start doing a video so that way I can at the very least consecrate this message to Our Lady, that way she can present it to Our Lord in a much better way. I heard a, um, well, I read that, um, you know, in the in the secret of the rosary, not the secret of the rosary, um, total consecration to Mary, that anytime you offer God something, it's better to put it in the hands of a Blessed Virgin Mary, because think of it this way, let's say you want to give a piece of fruit to the king, well, if you just give him the fruit, he's going to be like, what is this? But if you give it to Mary, she's going to put it on a silver platter and then present it to the king, right? So that's just kind of like how our prayers work when we offer it to Mary. So we're going to say in our Father, a Hail Mary and a Glory Be to begin with, okay? So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, if you guys don't know my story, um, I'll give you kind of like a brief, uh, not my whole story, but basically my middle school life. So, when I was in fifth grade, my family converted to Catholicism. I was very zealous for the faith. Um, you know, from fifth grade, sixth, and seventh, I had... Um, profound callings to become a priest. I was felt like I was being called to the priesthood. I felt like I was um, being drawn to it. You know, one of the things that I did when I was growing up is when I was an I was an altar server, and I was even altar server before I became Catholic. Um, I I did it because and I volunteered, so I was really drawn to the faith. And again, this is not by me. This is just by the Spirit moving within me, and. When I started to have these thoughts about becoming a priest, I started getting these massive temptations, specifically with impurity, uh, right around six, um, sixth and seventh grade and eighth grade, and uh, especially throughout high school. And I know you might be thinking, like, well, that's just puberty, right? That's just you going through a cycle of you know being a man, and you're just going to have those uh, hormones that are just going to spring up. But I had friends of mine who could really get it under control. And specifically, a friend of mine in eighth grade, um, who is now becoming a priest, uh, oddly enough. Um, so it's not like it's impossible for kids in that age to not succumb to that. Um, however, I gave into those temptations very easily. In fact, it became a daily habit. Um, and, I, and I say this not to, uh, not to in any way glorify it. In fact, it, it ruined my life. Um, it got so bad where I lost my vocation entirely, no longer wanted to become a priest for all the wrong reasons, is because I couldn't imagine living my life celibate after after being basically engaged in violating the violating you know the sixth commandment over and over and over and over and over again uh, to the point where my conscience was just really dull and and blind, and I essentially became. Um, for lack of a better word, a, a womanizer. And and I think a lot of teens go through that 
were they're always obsessing over relationships and stuff like that and 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 just impurity thoughts of impurity just letting them fly and and uh one of the things that that really hurts me now is realizing that well first of all it was it was god permitted that to happen because i told him i want to be a priest and his response was all right well you better be able to you better be strong as a priest right you better be able you better be able to handle these temptations and come to me for help and i did not come to him for help um my parents caught me a few times and they sent me to confession as good parents would and i would confess those sins but i wouldn't really be that sorry about it and i'm telling you guys this just like straight up because i feel like if the you know when i'm transparent um you might be you might know someone like this or you might have a child like this but i was not really upset with myself i was only upset that i got caught to be honest with you and you know over time i kept on falling into the sin again now there was something in my conscience that was telling me that this was wrong um but i did i but one of the things that i did and i and i'm looking back and i'm realizing all the steps that satan had to try to turn me away was i took off my scapular i stopped wearing it and once i stopped wearing it uh you know the temptations only got worse i can't remember why i did stop wearing it. i think it's because i was it was itchy or something like that um or maybe it was like i was just tired of wearing it and then i lost it and i never found it right um stopped praying the rosary like i did all these terrible things and thank god for giving me the grace to come back to the church and come back to the sacraments and put on my scapular now don't get me wrong i was still going to church every week but i was a catholic in name only i really would say that you know i was uh very pro-life i've always been pro-life um i was very I, I would i would what you call a political catholic i know that's a really weird phrase but basically i was catholic in for all the wrong reasons um and i was proud of my faith but then i also didn't really practice it like i was really um good about going to mass every week you know going to confession every once in a while it was kind of almost like a checklist of things to do until you know about a year ago i started to really get back into my faith and one of the things that i had realized especially during adoration and prayer was realizing that you know god willed for me to be married you know and i'm happily married and i'm so glad i, I met in a wife who's also striving to be holy and i think she's definitely she's definitely um someone that god handpicked for me for sure especially if i tell you guys about her story which she might even come on here i'll probably tell her say hey you probably should tell your story too um long story short she could have easily died in an accident um in fact her car rolled over several times and she miraculously was saved and a couple weeks later she met me so um i'll probably have her tell the story because she'll probably tell it better than i did but, um, you know, so I realized that I had just squashed my vocation and I really regretted that. And I almost had this feeling like, you know, God, you know, God allows things to happen, but did I really choose the better path? Like, did I, did I squander something that was so, so precious and beautiful? And then I come across this quote and it says, the greatest male saint who ever lived was not a deacon, not a priest not a bishop, not a hermit, not a monk, but he was a husband, a father, and a worker. And I and I read that and it and it hit me and it struck me because I kept on thinking in order for me to be a good and again, this is an unhealthy thought, by the way. I don't recommend anyone think these thoughts. I was thinking like, well, in order for me to fulfill God's will and to be the best I can possibly be, well, I got to be a priest. I got to be a deacon. I was even looking into being a deacon. I was I was reading about it. I was trying to see if I could study courses. I was going to go through some, um, I'm not old enough to be a deacon, but at least I was going to look into it. And, and I was thinking, you know, okay, what am I doing now that can be pleasing to the Lord? And I was like, well, I teach martial arts to kids. So I have, um, a decent impact in their life. Uh, they, sometimes they come to me asking for advice about stuff and, 
you know, in, in one way or another, I can show them um, how God has worked in my life and how it can affect them. And then I was thinking like, well, I'm a husband and I, and I love my wife and I want to take care of her. Uh, we are preparing to be parents. So, you know, I, I was thinking like, okay, well, what more can I do, Lord? But then I was thinking also reading in the Gospels, there were times when Jesus healed. There's a, a particular instance where Jesus healed one of the lepers. And the leper says, I want to go with you. I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. And Jesus said, no. He said, no. And he said, tell everyone. Tell everyone what I did for you. And the leper obeyed. He said, okay. I'm not going to follow the Lord physically, you know, as his apostle, because that's not his will for me. His will for me is to spread in my community, to tell everyone in my community what the Lord has done for me. And I realize that that message is also for me too, that I may not be called to be a priest or a bishop or a, or a monk. And you might be someone who is married right now, or maybe uh, is single, but you are still making discernments. And you might think like, okay, this is the best and the greatest way to please God. Now, here's the thing. If you are single right now, you should always have that possibility open. Be open to it. Really embrace yourself in it. Uh, attend daily mass. Go to adoration. Go to confession frequently. Pray the rosary every day. Pray all the, the entire rosary. Pray it every day. Really ask God to guide you in this discernment. And unless you have a ring on your finger... <laughs> don't fully commit to that yet. Now, here's the thing. I was thinking about this a lot and I was thinking about, okay, well, God clearly, clearly in his will wants, wants me to be a married man. And I, and I fully accept that and I fully embrace it. And I, in fact, I love it. I get so much joy from it. And I also know that because he has asked me to be in this role, a person that, which oddly enough, as soon as I got married, I know this is definitely the guard. By the way, when you get married, you have a guardian angel for your marriage. I found this out. And I definitely know that this guardian angel was really drawing me to St. Joseph. I started seeing more pictures of St. Joseph um, pop up on my Facebook and Instagram feed. I started to hear more about St. Joseph. I met a gentleman who had a great devotion to St. Joseph and I brought in a beautiful picture. It's actually, it used to be behind me. It's in our living room now. But you know, my, my wife got me this beautiful painting of St. Joseph. I brought it to the church and all these men were just like, wow, that is the coolest painting of St. Joseph I've ever seen. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then some YouTubers I saw that I really look up to were having pictures of St. Joseph in the background. So I was like, there's a lot of St. Joseph, you know, cause I really didn't really uh, um, have that much of a devotion to him until I got married, until I was feeling this drawn and this call to really, um, pray to St. Joseph more because one of the things that I was told in, um, before I got married by the priest who was going to marry us, he said that, you know, as the man of the household, you are the priest of the house. It didn't hit me till recently. I was really thinking about it. Like, yeah, you're right. Like, so he says, I have the authority to, to pray over my wife and over my kids. Like if I commit a mortal sin, it's going to affect my entire family. Right? If I am the one, if I'm not in the state of grace and if I'm not setting a best example, it's going to affect the rest of my family. And I, I heard a statistic too that like something like 80%, like if you have children in the faith right now and the father follows it to the T and he's very devout and the mother's not, there's like an 80% chance that the children are still going to remain faithful. But if the father isn't doing it and the mother's really devout and really holy, there's a very low chance that the kids are actually going to keep up with the faith. And it's not no offense to the mother, but this is how God designed the family structure. The man is the head of the household. He has the, the, uh, the responsibility and the duty to provide for the children spiritually, right? And to be basically the, the, the front lines of demons. And that's what I, that's what I took seriously. And I've been taking it seriously for a while. And then I was just thinking like, okay, how can I, you know, what else can I do for God? And then I was, I came across this quote and I was like, this is speaking to me perfectly because, you know, if you're truly wanting to grow in your faith, you want to be a saint. If you want to be, if you're Catholic and you don't want to be a saint, there's something wrong, right? There's something wrong. 
you are the lukewarm person that Christ is talking about in the book of Revelation. And I say this with love because I was definitely this lukewarm person. You know, I would just kind of go to mass, you know, go through the motions, pray when I'm told to, not pray because I had to, or not pray because um, I wanted to. I'd only do it because I had to. Um, I would just basically be a Catholic in name only. And deep down inside, I, I just felt like something was always missing. And I would seek it in avarice. I would seek it in getting more money. And I would seek it into trying to grow my business more. And I would try to think only about that. I was surrounding myself with people who only thought about that. And it wasn't until that I went to a really dark place and realized that nothing is fulfilling me. Nothing is making me truly happy. Everything's temporary. And it wasn't until I started praying the rosary with a lot of uh, just intensity really like when i started praying after being in, after falling away for so long and committing so many mortal sins and i'm telling you guys like the worst thing you can do is be in mortal sin and then take communion and i was doing that so much and i'm so ashamed of it um i was so ashamed of it because i was somehow too embarrassed to take communion and have my parents or sorry i was too embarrassed to not take communion and have my parents wonder like hmm i wonder what i wonder what our son did I wonder what our son did. I was too embarrassed to take him to to not take communion and to, and to get a blessing or to sit in the pew because I was worried about what they were thinking when I was a teenager and even when I when I was a young adult, right? Um, it's it's shameful and it's terrible and I and I I committed so much sacrilege. And you might think that this would drive someone to despair, and in middle school and part of, and part of high school it did, right? It got so bad where I was drowning in my sins, I was not taking my faith seriously, that I had thoughts of committing suicide. In, 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 in middle school, I had those thoughts. And thank goodness I had a loving family who t was there for me and people praying for me constantly. I know there was this old woman we met. Uh, she passed away years ago. And I know, and she was one of the holiest women I met. She, her name was Lily. I know she's praying for me. I know she prayed for me during that time because... I went to a deep dark place my cousins as well they all um looked out for me and took care of me they threw me a big party and told me how much they love me it was an amazing experience i can probably tell you guys about that later um but you know i was going through all that and it did give me despair and even and yeah more recently it did give me despair um but the thing that got me through it was not necessarily understanding not necessarily getting a grasp of things, but simply giving God permission. Like, I decided, okay, I'm going to give God permission to work in my life. And I'm going to give him permission, not to necessarily fix me, but to show me how I can be fixed. And one of the ways he, he did that was he showed on Amazon the brown scapular. After I had not looked it up for a while... Show me the brown scapular. And then it clicked. It's like, oh, I haven't worn that in a while. And I'll tell you what, you guys, just putting this thing on, okay? Putting this, this scapular on does so much more for you than you could possibly imagine. Because what does this mean? This is a symbol that you are a child of Mary, that you are under Mary's protection, right? And I'm, I know I'm going to sound cuckoo for saying this, but my life changed just by putting this thing back on just by putting it on. So if you have a teenager who may have been, who might be, which I'll be honest with you, it's it's very easy to fall into these sins of impurity now because the world is telling you that it's normal, that it's not a big deal. You know, everybody does it, right? You simply put this thing on, have them get, get them, get the priest to make the, um, do the prayers with you. Have him put this on. Mary's going to take care of them. In the end, he's, she's going to take care of them. I know that she did for me. Even for all those years that I did not wear the scapular and I kept it off for so long, it came back around and I got it back on. And it and it's like, it's as if all the grace came at to me all at once when I put this thing on. Um, you know, and uh, I just want to share this message with you guys today. I know it kind of went all over the place. Um, but, you know, if you're someone who's trying to be faithful to God and you are wondering like okay did i did i lose my vocation and stuff like that and just think like okay saint joseph 
he was okay think of it this way he was the 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 foster parent of god himself just like how god picked mary to be the perfect mother would you not think that he picked joseph to be the perfect foster father so he's a great model to follow i know he doesn't get as much attention but he really should because he's called the terror of demons for a reason right the holy family those those three people are remarkable examples for us to follow right because they're all you know we have jesus christ who's the priest he is the priest we have our blessed mother mary who's a mother right symbol of purity symbol of chastity saint joseph also most chaste spouse very holy man terror of demons right terror of demons you, you do you think that throughout their life when they were fleeing from egypt you know and people were trying to kill all the newborn infants jesus being one of them do you, do you not think that he had to defend his family from attacks and threats yeah spiritually and probably physically as well so he's the man he's a manly man and I think every man, especially in our culture today, which which has become so snowflakey, need good men to follow. And and I, and I ask kids this sometimes. I ask them like, "Hey, who's who's your, who do you look up to?" And they'll say like a basketball player or like a football player or like a pop star or like a singer. And then I'm just like, "Man, if if kids had better role models like Saint Joseph or Saint John Bosco or you know." saint benedict saint dominic saint francis if they looked up to those people if they only knew the stories of these holy men and women their lives would be so much better because think about the latest basketball player or pop star like you can read an article about them a year from now maybe not even then about them you know hitting someone with in a car or like you know i think of a usc fighter john jones right he's He's proclaiming to be a Christian, but his his actions do not show that. You look at the life of a saint, yeah, some of their lives might be really bad. Like St. Augustine, very vile person until it, until he be he until he converted, right? So I'm not saying you can't like be you have to be perfect, but I'm saying like why look up to those people who are going to constantly let you down instead of someone who's we know is a saint in heaven. But then again, again, again that's the way of the world. So well, I know this video went all over the place, but I felt like this message had to be shared. So hope you guys have a wonderful day and God bless.